And just like Joe Montana waltzing into a stadium with the football under his arm, with Jerry Rice standing even there in two, at the under end of the field, it came to pass. When all the people were clean passed over Jordan, having all leaped over a six and a half foot tall NBA player, that the Lord spake unto Joshua in a loud, booming voice that almost causes them to become deaf, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe of man, and in no way doth this sound gay. And minister Joshua said unto the Lord, O oh my God, and Yahweh say, Yes? And Joshua said, Are these to be the same exact twelve men out of every tribe of man that I have already separated from the host in the previous chapter, and are still standing yonder, bank of Jordan awaiting further instructions, or am I to go throughout the host a second time? and take me out whereof twelve more men out of every man a tribe. But the Lord giveth Joshua no answer to his question. And the Lord said, Command ye them, saying, Take ye out hence of the midst of Jordan, where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and shall carry them over with you, and place them on top of each other, and light a campfire underneath them. And whereupon thou shalt start a barbecue, and shalt cook upon the fire hamburgers, hot dogs, and spare ribs, but thou shalt take care that the food is kosher, and served with unleavened bread. And ye shall leave them there in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night, in a roadside motel, for thirty-five dollars a night. Then Joshua the son of Anun called the twelve men, for he had all their cell phone numbers on speed dial, and did confirm what outfits they were all going to wear that evening, when they all trolled the town arm in arm, and when they go to get completely sh faced at the local bar, wherein they shall wink at all the muscular young lads over by the pool table. So he called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, at a young age in a special training program, in a secret dojo at the top of a snow-covered mountain, out of every tribe of man. And minister Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God to the midst of Jordan, because for some reason they were still standing in the middle of a dried riverbed, even though everyone else had already crossed the river, and joined the two out of the recon scout spirit and cloud, for the children of Israel did not trust the big heap of water at the head of the river, which was held in place as if by magic, and they did wonder exactly how much mana power that God had left to keep up casting the spell, and did want to cross over the river before this power ran out, and he did collapse into the ground in the cold, cold sweat, and the waters of the river would then rush past and cause the priests to be drowned, and the Ark of the Covenant to be lost forever, at least until such time as Harrison Ford would find it again. Mm, well, anyway, take up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, for behold, the adults of Israel can go fetch their own damned stones. That this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean ye these stones? For certainly this is the type of question that your children shall ask of you, and shall not say unto you such things as, I'm bored, and I want to go swimming, and Dad, Johnny just threw sand at me, and I can hash cheeseburger. And you shall say unto them, Shut up the f up before I knocketh you upside your f***ing head. For thou shalt remember that thou art commanded to stone disobedient children, so thou shalt go ahead and pick up one of them and put it to good use, as thou shalt suddenly come up with an excuse to take the Bible literally. And after your children shall suddenly learn to behave themselves, and ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it passes over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off, for thou shalt repeat the statement thou shalt have just said, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. For the adults shall by this time have learned how to conduct themselves properly at an important historical location. And, of course, if this is to be taken literally, as the Bible is supposed to be, it would mean that these stones are still there even to this day, and will continue to be there all throughout the apocalypse, and the complete destruction of the earth, causing these stones to float aimlessly in the outer space with a fire underneath it, cooking our perpetual barbecue. 
and the Lord shall stop by from time to time and pick up himself a hot dog. And the children of Israel did so as Minister Joshua commanded, while the adults just stood there with their arms crossed, and with the fierce scowl was shown upon their faces. And they took up stones out of the midst of Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. While the twelve soldiers taken from the twelve tribes got mad and stamped their feet, because that was their job, so now they had nothing left to do, and now that they were unemployed, they thought that the best thing that they could do was start a riot. And they carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, in the roadside motel for thirty-five dollars a night, and laid them down there in a pile, and fired up a barbecue, whereupon they began to cook hamburgers. And God cut to the front of the line, and walked up to the cook, who was a forty-year-old man with three kids, wearing a dirty apron with the words, World's Greasiest Chef, and said unto him, Yea, and thou shalt make mine hamburger, medium rare. And Joshua, the son of Anun, set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, for he was apparently as strong as twelve other men combined, in the place where the feet of the priests which bare the Ark of the Covenant stood, and whereupon built another smaller barbecue, for by this time the priests were quite hungry, and growing tired of holding the Ark upon their shoulders. And there they are unto this day, which may be verified if you send snorkelers down into the water of the river Jordan to find out if there are in fact twelve stones piled upon each other with the remnants of a spare rib that had been cooking there. For the priests which bare the ark stood in the midst of Jordan, and they were starting to get very tired, and were quite worried that the mass of water standing in the heap right next to them until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. And Joshua was confused, as he was not sure who dost tell him to do all these things. Was it the Lord? Or was it Moses? The only explanation that he can think of was that Moses was God, or at least the Son of God, which we all know is the exact same fool anyway. And the people hasted and passed it over, for they were starting to get bored, and they thought that this chapter was insufferably long, even when read literally and in a comedic manner. And just like a boot camp private marching in formation towards the athletic track to start his final physical fitness exam, it came to pass. When all the people were clean passed over, and the Ark of the Lord passed over, and the priests, and Harrison Ford, and George Lucas, and Steven Spielberg, and a group of German Nazis, and a personal assistant that looked suspiciously like Gimli the dwarf from Lord of the Rings in the presence of the people. And George Lucas to draw a lightsaber, because, of course, these items do exist in real life, and said unto Joshua, Giveth unto me a hamburger, medium rare, and a beer, lest I do slice of your head off, in the name of the Lord. And the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, passed over armed before the children of Israel, as Moses spake unto them. And the parents did tell them to behave themselves, and in no case did this arouse attention from the UN inspectors. About forty thousand prepared for war to pass over before the Lord into battle to the plains of Jericho. And they did attend boot camp and advanced individual training, and then went on leave to spend some time with their families, which did drive them unto the airport, and did kiss them on the cheek, and did take pictures before they reported to the first duty station. And that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel with a giant electron microscope, and they feared him, for they did see a close up of a microscopic organism crawling on his skin. And they feared him, as they feared Moses all the days of his life. For he did yell at them, and did swing wildly a giant axe, and did speak in an indecipherable language, and did have spittle dribbling down his unkept beard. And the Lord spake unto minister Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony, that they come up out of Jordan, and tell the cook how they want their steaks done. For since they are doing most of the heavy labor in the story, they shall have head of the line privileges. And Joshua the son of Anun therefore commanded the priest, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan, and send on line to get yourselves a hamburger. And the Lord said unto Joshua, That is not what I said unto you. And just like an elderly person returning to the nursing home for the very last time ever, it came to pass. When the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up unto the dry land, that the waters of the Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all its banks as they did before, and the robes of the priests at the very end of the line got wet from the rushing water, and did cause the back of the robes to come see-through. And all the children of Israel saw that they were wearing pink underwear with yellow polka dots, and they all did laugh at them. And nobody in this narrative gave any thought about how this in no wise comported to the laws of physics, 
and further that there is absolutely no archaeological evidence that this event ever happened. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and encamped in Gilgal, in the east border of Jericho, where they had campgrounds, fishing piers, a designated swimming area, beach volleyball, water skiing, electricity and sewage connection for recreational vehicles, and a wireless internet hotspot. And all the children of Israel had a mighty fine time, however the parents of Israel ignored them while they sat around and got drunk. And those twelve stones, which they took up out of Jordan, did Joshua pitch in Gilgal, which caused them to become confused, for most assuredly they had already done this, as the barbecue fire was already coming along nicely. And the cook did say unto Minister Joshua, How would you like your steak done? And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land, which, as ye all recall, is exactly the same conversation we did have before. And some of the children of Israel did look up from their sandcastles and plastic beach toys and did say to Joshua, You're silly, we're not old enough to have children. And one child of Israel did politely ask Joshua if he would please cut up his hot dog for him. And all the children of Israel gathered round unto Joshua near the campfire, and he did tell him a bedtime story. And he said unto them, for the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you, until you were passed over, which you ought to re remember quite well, as it just happened a few hours ago. As the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us, until we heard gone over. Which is certainly just as likely a situation which, having happened exactly as written, and interpreted literally, holds exactly to the same level of scientific scrutiny and archaeological evidence. That all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, for he has huge biceps and a broad chest. Furthermore, he has won the Mr. Universe contest, mostly because he created the universe to begin with, therefore he wins the contest named after his creation. That ye may fear the Lord your God forever, for most assuredly, since God is the God of love, ye are required to fear him and not love him, and in no way doth this statement contradict anything else in the Bible. And about this time, as Minister Joshua the son of Anun was speaking these words unto the children of Israel around the campfire, just as the marshmallows were about to be passed around that they might be lightly toasted in the fire, a United Nations inspector suddenly descended upon the camp and did ask who was in charge and what were the ages of the children who were practicing their swordsman skills over in the sand pit. And whereupon he was told that the children of Israel were underage, and he demanded to see their birth certificates of all the children of Israel who were to be sent to Jordan to draw the sword in battle. And all the children of Israel pointed to Joshua, who was the commander in chief, and Joshua did point over to the Lord, who was eating a pork chop, because God apparently does not have to keep kosher. And the Lord said unto the UN inspector, Exactly what art thou going to do about it? And the cook over by the barbecue did ask you and Inspector what he wanted on his hamburger. Up to the walls of Jericho, smart gun in his hand. Go to love him, the heart tried to die away. The battle is in my hand. Hallelujah! Got your pistol battle of Jericho. 